So, um, this is, you know, these next few videos are all about constructing a confidence interval for a population mean. So, estimating a population mean, which is mu. Um, so, you're doing confidence intervals for mu, and there are two cases that you're going to see. The first case is uh, with this video where sigma is known. And if sigma is known, then you're going to use your SND stuff again. But if sigma is unknown, you have some extra uh, or a different type of distribution. Um, use the student T distribution, that's what it's called. So, if you're estimating a population mean or determining a confidence interval for a population mean, then you have to consider whether or not sigma is known. Because if it is known, we use one method. If sigma is unknown, we use another. So, it's very important to determine which scenario it is. This is a uh, video regarding estimating a population mean where sigma is known. And I want to make sure we uh, remember what sigma is. Sigma is your population standard deviation, and we represent sigma with this symbol that looks like that. So um, this is your for these are your formulas to do the confidence interval for your population mean, right? So using sample mean x bar to estimate population mean mu. This is the formula for your margin of error if you're using your formulas. And then this is how you calculate your um, minimum and your maximum value for your confidence interval. Notice that the critical, uh, critical value is also a z-score. So you'd find that the same way you would for a population proportion. If you're using the calculator trick, um, then this is the location. So stat, test, and now we're looking at z-interval to do this if we're not using the formula. So let's look at this example. Um, as I read it, I'm going to pull information out. So a sample of 106 body temperatures. So that is our sample size. N is equal to 106. So pull out the information as you read it. And that sample has a mean. So from the sample, the average is, that's X bar. The sample mean is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So a sample of 106 body temperatures have a mean. This mean comes from the sample. Now you notice this is separate. The standard deviation for all body temperatures is this. This means that they give us sigma, population standard deviation, um, which is 0 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now, if they had said something like this, a sample of 106 body temperatures have a mean of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and a standard deviation of 0 0.62, then that would imply that that standard deviation comes from the sample, and that would be S instead of sigma. But because they say, well, the mean from the sample is 106, that's a sample mean, the standard deviation for all body temperatures that's a population standard deviation and sigma is known therefore we would use our z interval calculator trick to find this confidence interval okay for this situation um, now we are going to construct a 95 percent confidence interval estimate 95 percent confidence level of the mean body temperature so we want a 95 percent confidence interval for mu, the mean. Okay, so this is important to determine what kind of confidence interval you're looking for. Find the confidence interval estimate of the mean body temperature for the population, right? For mu. Now, all right, so we have n, we have x bar, and we have sigma. We're going to use the interval. So here's um, what the graphing calculator looks like. You remember you go to stat, which is here, and this is for TI-84+. plus. Same thing with the TI-83, or same location stat. Um, you see test here, we're going to scroll over to test. And we're looking for Z interval, so scroll down until you see Z interval, which in my case is 
uh, I skipped it, number seven, and then enter. So this is what it looks like when I do the interval. Now you see that you have two options, data and stats. We don't have data, right? We don't have a list of numbers. We actually have stats. So scroll over so that stats is highlighted, press enter. Now stats is highlighted. You see how it asks for sigma and x bar and n. And then your C level, we have all of that. So let's scroll down. Sigma was, what was it? 0 0.62, 0 0.62, enter, x bar, 98.6, enter, and then n, my sample size is 106, enter. My C level in this case, I want a 95% confidence level, 95% confidence interval. So my C level is 95% or 0.95 in decimal form. Scroll down, calculate, and this is our range of numbers in interval notation. So from 98.48. So my lower end is 98.48. My upper end is 98.72. Ninety-eight point seven two degrees Fahrenheit. This is my ninety-five percent confidence interval estimate. And then, um, again, remember that we need to know how to interpret a confidence interval. So, hold on one second. So, what do we say? We are. 95% confident that the true value of the mean body temperature for the entire population is between 98.48 and 98.72 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so again, um, the important part of this is not only to determine what kind of confidence interval you're doing. If it's for a mean, you have to think about whether or not sigma is known or unknown. So the standard deviation for all body temperatures, that means sigma is known, so we're using Z interval. Okay, one more example here. Again, I'm going to pull out the information. Okay. All right, so here is example two. Um, let's go ahead and read it again. We want to determine what kind of confidence interval. Um, I mean, if you look here, first of all, construct a 90% um, percent confidence interval estimate of the mean, right? Again, the mean weight loss of all such subjects. So we know that we're doing a 98% confidence interval for a mean in this case, mu, which means we have to think about whether sigma is known or unknown. And now, in a test of weight loss programs, 40 adults use the Atkins weight loss program. Okay, here is example two. And again, you know, you you know, the biggest part of this is to determine what kind of confidence interval you guys are finding. So if you're asked for a confidence interval, in this case a 90% confidence interval estimate of the mean weight loss of all such subjects. So a 90% confidence interval estimate from mu, where mu represents the mean weight loss of all such subjects. So in a test of weight loss programs. 40 adults use the Atkins weight loss program. N is equal to 40. After 12 months, their mean weight loss was found to be 1.2 pounds. Their mean weight loss, 
from the sample, their average weight loss was 1.2 pounds. X bar is 1.2 pounds. The standard deviation for the population, so standard deviation for the population is sigma, is 4.8 pounds. Okay, so in a test of a weight loss program, 40 adults use the Atkins weight loss program. After 12 months, their mean weight loss X bar was found to be 1.2 pounds. The standard deviation for the population, sigma, is 4.8 pounds. Construct a 90% confidence interval estimate of the mean weight loss for all such subjects. Now because sigma is known, we're doing a confidence interval for mu, a mean, sigma is known, we're going to use z interval again. Now, uh, back to the TI 83, let's, or 84, whatever you guys are using, we're going to go to stat, and we're going to scroll over to test, and again we're looking for z interval. So again on mine, it's number 7, yours it could be around there, it doesn't really matter. Enter. Um, again, do I do data or stats? Well, if we think about it, we don't have data, right? We have stats, we have sigma, we have x bar, we have n. So that's what we're going to use and we're going to input that stuff. So let's see, sigma is 4.8 pounds. x bar is 1.2 pounds. n is 40. And our C level, confidence level, is 90%. So 0.9 for our C level. Calculate. This is my interval of value. So on the lower end, negative 0 0.0, say 0 0.05 maybe. Negative 0 0.05. And on the higher end, 2.45. 2.45 pounds. So this is our confidence interval. 90% confidence interval for mu, which is the mean weight loss of all such subjects. And again, remember that we want to interpret um, the situation. So I'm going to ask for that. I always ask for that for my students. You can imagine any professor would ask for that. Um, and we say we are, how confident? 90% confident. Uh, that the mean weight loss of all such subjects, and I'm just pulling that from the problem um, using this, this program, is between negative 0 0.05 and 2.45 pounds. Now the negative would just imply that they gained weight. And again, you have to think about like you know, what does it make sense for the situation? In 12 months, everybody, the population, using this uh, weight loss program, have an average of this weight loss in 12 months. So you got to, you know, think about whether or not the uh, program makes sense to actually use. In about 12 months, you're going to average between, let's say, 0 and 2.45 uh, weight loss, pounds of weight. <laughs> that you lose. So it all depends on whether or not that makes sense for you.